Can you all see my slides OK? Yes. OK, hi everyone. Um, my name is Sophia Qureshi and I'm a product manager from the Insider Risk Management team. I'm joined here by my partner Palomi Bandiopan from Padia from the Enter Conditional Access team. And we're going to be discussing the insider risk condition in Enter Conditional Access. So this condition just went GA this past June, and we just want to give you some more context on how to best use this condition and how it can help enhance your conditional access um, protocol. So today we'll be going through a couple things. We'll give some background on insider risk management and adaptive protection because these are the two um, solutions from Purview that help to power the condition in conditional access. And then we will go ahead and demonstrate the integration and then finish off by answering any questions. So starting off with what is insider risk management? So insider risk management is a solution from Microsoft Purview that quickly identifies um, and detects insider risks with an integrated end-to-end -end approach. So we use uh, activity from the audit logs to help detect any activity that may be considered risky by users within an organization. And using customizable ML templates, we are able to identify which users in your organization might be posing risk. Um, and these templates are made through things called policies. Um, and then the policies generate alerts on potential risky activity and risky users. And then um, you're able to investigate those alerts. Pri um, we have privacy built in through pseudonymization. And eventually alerts that are confirmed can be taken to security, HR and legal teams to be further actioned on. So yeah, we use things like uh, risky sequences of activities like exfiltrating data through email, exfiltrating data through copying it to an external USB and other um, elements like that. And we use, we're able to identify sequences as well as other contextual elements like HR resignation dates, um, risky performance reviews and other elements that may ultimately lead an insider to be risky. So um, yeah, it's used by companies worldwide to identify insider risks and also to take action on these risks through our collaborated workflow. So within insider risk management, um, we I mentioned a couple of the elements that we use to identify these risky users. We have anomaly detection, so this will basically identify when users are accomplishing activity that is out of the norm either for their organization, for their own activity, or for their users that they're in their peer group. We also have sequence detection, so I mentioned this a little bit earlier as well. We have common sequences that indicate that a user might be offboarding um, sensitive data, so things like downgrading sensitivity labels, downloading that information off the um, SharePoint sites, and then printing it. Other really common ones are email scenarios. And then we have other risk indicators. So things like employee resignation. Um, if an employee is resigning, they're more likely to try to offload data. So we take that into account. We also have a potentially high impact user designation, which um, boosts um, the risk scores for users that have access to more sensitive crown jewel type data. And then we have um, integrations with other solutions as well. So here's an example of how insider risk management would work. Um, with that end-to-end -end workflow with E5. So let's say an employee enters a resignation tool, um, a resignation date in the HR tool. So this signal comes from the HR connector and creates a trigger that starts to look back 90 days before the resignation date and then forward 30 days. So we get context on what happens before they um, enter the resignation date and context on what happens after. And this helps to create a complete picture about what kind of activity the user is um, is going through and what that activity might mean in terms of how they're interacting with data within an organization. So examples are OneDrive data, um, data from information protection, which is also another Purview solution, and then um, other activity with files like renaming more sensitive files to more innocuous file names. And we can also see what happens after their resignation date. So more SharePoint activity in this case, um, more label changing. We also have integrations with Defender for Endpoint, and then we can see them download malicious software um, to their machine. And ultimately, this gives a complete picture of who risky users are, what makes them risky, and what activities they are um, completing that puts data at risk. Um, and how this ultimately helps organizations to identify which users are risky and take them through the process to remediate um, any risk they might have posed to data. 
So now that we have um, all these powerful detection tools with insider risk management, we have something called adaptive protection. So adaptive protection is a custom configurable um, feature within insider risk management that allows admin to identify what activity they consider risky within that organization and define um, different risk levels that correspond to different thresholds for that activity. So um, these risk levels are minor, moderate, and high risk. And using the adaptive protection risk level, we are able to integrate with enter conditional access to apply dynamic controls to risk users. So I think the best way to illustrate this is with an example. Um, here we have three users, Rita, Ray, and Sylvia. So Sylvia is identified as a minor risk by our organization. She doesn't have any risky activity. Ray is a moderate risk because he has submitted resignation. He works on a highly sensitive project, so he's a potential high impact user, but he doesn't have any other risky activity beyond that. And then Sylvia is a high risk because she has also submitted a resignation, also is a high impact user, and also has completed some of that risky activity. So things like um, sending sensitive data to her personal email. So each of these users is assigned a risk level within insider risk management through adaptive protection. And that risk level is then accessed by enter conditional access. And enter conditional access has policies, which um, my coworker will explain in a second, that will apply dynamic controls based on what the user's risk level are, is. So in this case, Rita is going to receive a terms of use because she's a minor risk. Um, Ray is going to receive a terms of use on Office 365 and Salesforce, and Sylvia will be actually blocked from Salesforce access because um, she is the highest risk. So the goal here is to allow for the less risky users like Rita and Ray, those minor and moderate risks, to be able to continue to accomplish their activities without being blocked, to continue to be productive, while also protecting um, organizations from people like Sylvia who are potentially completing bad activity within the organization. So it balance adaptive protection balances that dynamic risk prevention with um, proactive controls and also helps stop the bleeding in the cases where a risky user may have compromised information. So yeah, I'll pass it off now to Palomi, who's going to explain a little bit more about how this works on the conditional access side. Thanks, Sophia. Thanks for explaining what adaptive protection does and how we receive the insider risk signals. So on the screen, you have a conditional access, uh, a, a conditional access policy that is being created. Now, we, I created it for a demo for this session. If you notice here, I explained the name as demo, and then after that, I specify the target resources. What this means is what all application would this be applicable to? Here I mentioned all cloud apps meaning that uh, anyone who's trying to access these cloud apps, the actions would be applicable to those users or those actions. Next, we come to the, uh, the condition that we have selected. Now, condition is the insider risk condition that Sophia just explained. It's uh, now if you notice on the right hand side, you see the insider risk is selected. I have configured as marked it as yes. Select the risk levels that must be assigned to to enforce the policy. Uh, Sophia just mentioned about the three kinds of risks that a user might have elevated, moderate or minor. For minor or moderate, you can simply say that, OK, these are minor risk users. We don't need to block them. They can only be served a terms of use kind of a agreement that we they have to select they they were this is to identify that yes they were identified as a risky user minor and moderate they just have to accept the terms of use and go ahead but for an elevated risk uh, you can control you can actually block the access of such users by controlling it in the access controls so what we have done in access controls is we have blocked access for uh, elevated risk users which i'll be explaining in the uh, how the end user ex experience would be those uh, under that, so this is how conditional access brings the signals together to make decisions. In this case, the signal that is received is from adaptive protection, the insider risk signal that we received from adaptive protection and incorporated it in the conditional access policy that we are creating. Uh, Sophia, would, could you move to the next end user experience now? So here in this screen, uh, what happens is the high risk user, elevated risk user is trying to gain access. Remember, this user actually 
he tries to access but he can't get in why because the conditional access policy is prohibiting the user from gaining any further access beyond this point so you notice moment you enter username password the user was blocked access and why because this is a uh, the target resources that were uh, targeted were all cloud apps and it makes sense the user should not go any further beyond this point thank you so that was it for our slides. Something important to note here is that while you have to configure adaptive protection in insider risk management and configure your policies in conditional access, you need to have adaptive protection configured in order for the conditional access um, condition to work properly because it needs to receive the input of your custom configured risk levels and your risk users from adaptive protection. Yeah, um, I guess we can open it up to Q&A now if there's anything. Doesn't seem like there are any questions at this point. We can give it a couple minutes to see if anything trickles in. Don't be shy. This is the time to ask all your questions. Yeah, we have a pretty intimate session today, so no question is off limits. <laughs> We did just get one. Yeah. Uh, how how easy is it to set up adaptive pr uh, protection? Is it just a tick box? So um, I can answer this question. So setting up adaptive protection can be as easy as clicking a button. We do have a quick setup function um, in the insider risk management experience where adaptive protection. So adaptive protection has a couple components. It has these risk levels, um, and then it has the policies like the CA policy that. Um, Palomi was describing to us. So in order to set up the risk levels, if you want to use like the Microsoft provided defaults, you can just click a quick setup button and then everything will set up. This takes about 72 hours, but if you do want to configure it more to your organization's needs or particular um, risk appetite, then you would need to um, do more than just click a box. Yeah, like over 99% of our customers currently use quick setup, so it is pretty popular to set up that way. To add to what Sophia just mentioned, uh, even if you go to conditional access and you have the right license that Sophia also mentioned, I think the e-file license, and you don't have adaptive protection set up, you can also launch it from the conditional access homepage. You have a button from there too. Yeah. Great. Um, I see the other question about adaptive protection being included in V5, kind of hinting at what Palomi was saying earlier. Adaptive protection is included in the M365 E5 and in compliance E5 and any like similar licenses. It's just not included in the insider risk management add on. So if you have E5, then you're good with adaptive protection. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, we got, oh, oh. It's... 
Is there anything else you want to add, Sophia or Pulumi? Uh, I think the one major thing we'd love to add is we'd love to get more feedback on this integration since it's so new to GA. So please go ahead and give it a go. Um, and after the call and after you've had a chance to play around with it a bit, please fill out the survey just so we can help serve you better with the integration and also get a better understanding of how it might be impacting you and helping you out. Yes. Yeah, plus one to that. Very easy to set up. You can use the templates and go ahead. Don't be scared by saying because it says block access doesn't mean it will block all access. You can all easily configure what all you want to do for your organization and go ahead. Use the feature and let us know your feedback. Great, thank you. And yes, this will be posted to YouTube. Just a reminder. Mm -hmm. Any final questions, thoughts? Questions, nothing. All right, well, if that is it, we will go ahead and close out this call. Uh, we'd love to thank Sophia and Palumi for joining us today. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and we will be sending a thank you email along with this survey. So if there's anything that we missed or you forgot to ask a question, there'll be an email address in there to go ahead and contact us. All right, we hope you have a great day. Yeah, thank thank you. you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.